Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Sparkle English. My name is Jennifer and today I'm going to teach you all about the Oxford comma. In my last video on commas, there was some confusion about the Oxford comma and when it is necessary. So this is a controversial topic. Some people use the Oxford comma and other people do not. So what is the Oxford comma? It is the comma used before the conjunction in a list of three or more items. It is also known as the serial comma. Let's look at this sentence. I need to buy some new gloves, comma, a scarf, comma, and a hat. This comma here, after scarf and before the coordinating conjunction and, is the Oxford comma. Here's another example. Zoe and Ethan decided to build a snowman, have a snowball fight, make snow angels, and go sledding down the hill. This comma here, after the second last item in a list, before the coordinating conjunction and, is the Oxford comma. It is the final comma in the list before the coordinating conjunction. Now, some people never use the Oxford comma, and some people always use the Oxford comma. So I want to teach you about where the Oxford comma came from and its usage around the world and with different style guides. So the Oxford comma is predominantly used in American English and is endorsed by many major style guides in North America. It is less common in British English, even though the Oxford comma got its name from the Oxford University Press in England. The Oxford comma first appeared in the 1905 Oxford University Press style guide. So even though it originated in England, it's not typically used in England. So if you're not familiar with style guides, they're comprehensive manuals that provide guidelines for writing and formatting documents. And different style guides are used for different purposes. And style guides are used in academic writing, journalism, technical writing, etc. So you can see the majority of North American style guides recommend the use of the Oxford comma, except for the AP style book. However, the majority of British style guides do not use the Oxford comma, except for the Oxford University Press style guide. So the most important thing is to be consistent. Choose whether you will or will not use the Oxford comma and be consistent. I personally use the Oxford comma and there are some instances when it's imperative for you to use the Oxford comma. And I'm going to show you some examples. First, let's just look at some general examples of the Oxford comma and how we use it with lists. During the holiday season, we enjoy baking cookies, comma, drinking eggnog, comma, and singing carols. Here we have a list of activities, and this is the Oxford comma before and. Now in this example, if we removed the Oxford comma, it wouldn't change the sentence. It's still very clear that these are three separate activities. Another example. The ski resort offers lessons in skiing, snowboarding, and ice skating. Again, this comma here is optional. It doesn't change the meaning of the sentence. The holiday dinner menu includes roast turkey, baked ham, or vegetarian lasagna. Now, in this final example, I think the Oxford comma is useful because it makes it clear that there isn't a ham lasagna option. Without the Oxford comma, it might appear as if the dinner menu offers ham lasagna or vegetarian lasagna. Using the Oxford comma makes it clear we're talking about three different items. But I want to show you some other examples where the Oxford comma really is imperative. Martha went skiing with her parents, Janet and Brad. In this sentence, we have not used the Oxford comma. We've only used one comma after parents. 
And written this way, it looks like Martha went skiing with her parents named Janet and Brad. So if you were reading a book, you could assume that this is Martha, and here are her parents, Janet and Brad. However, if we use the Oxford comma, it makes it very clear that Martha went skiing with her parents and Janet and Brad. So this completely changes the sentence because now we know Martha is skiing with a group of people. Of course, an easy fix would be to reverse the order. Martha went skiing with Janet, comma, Brad, and her parents. However, if you were transcribing this, you wouldn't have the option to change the wording around. And sometimes when you're writing a sentence, maybe the parents are the most important and so you want to put them first. In any case, using the Oxford comma can prevent confusion like this. And before we go on to our next confusing example, if you want more help with punctuation, make sure to order my 16 Basic Punctuation Rules ebook, which you can get by clicking on the link in the description below. My ebook contains over 50 pages, helping you with all the basic punctuation rules in English. Ordering this ebook also helps support my channel. So here's another confusing example. Can you find Bethany, the elf and DJ? In this first example, it looks like we're talking about one person, Bethany, who is also an elf and a DJ. Imagine there's a Christmas party and Bethany is the hired elf DJ. Without the Oxford comma, it looks like she is both the elf and the DJ. However, in this example, can you find Bethany, comma, the elf, comma, and DJ? It's clear we're talking about three different people, Bethany, the elf, and the DJ. So in examples like this, especially with people and professions, using the Oxford comma can really help make things clear. The Oxford comma can also be used in examples like this. Our Christmas morning tradition includes opening stockings and presents, singing carols and hymns, and sharing stories and laughter. In this example, we have a list using a lot of coordinating conjunctions. Opening stockings and presents is one group. Singing carols and hymns is another group. And sharing stories and laughter. So without the Oxford comma, it doesn't look as clear that we're talking about three different groups. And the Oxford comma just makes it easier on the eyes and easier to understand that we're talking about three activities. Another example, the cozy cabin was stocked with logs and kindling, blankets and quilts, and puzzles and board games. Once again, using this Oxford comma just makes it look cleaner and more obvious that we're talking about three different groups. So now we're going to do a quiz. I want you to use the Oxford comma where it's necessary to prevent confusion. None of these sentences contain the Oxford comma. You can add the Oxford comma to all the sentences, but I want you to identify where you think the Oxford comma is necessary to prevent confusion. Let's begin. Number one, I invited my parents, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Number two, we went shopping for scarves, hats, boots, and mittens. Number three, she dedicated her new book to her roommates, Justin Bieber and Ryan Gosling. Number four, the children spent the weekend ice skating, building snowmen, and watching Christmas movies. And finally, number five, for the snowy evening, we prepared hot chocolate and marshmallows, apple cider and cinnamon sticks, and tea and honey. Okay, so I'm going to circle the sentences where using the Oxford comma is necessary to prevent confusion. Number one, we should use the Oxford comma here. Now, of course, it's obvious to most of us that my parents are not Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. However, written like this, it looks like I'm introducing the names of my parents, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. So using the comma after Pitt before and makes it clear I'm talking about my parents and Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. In number two, 
It's not necessary to use the Oxford comma. Of course, I always prefer to use it, and if I did want to place it, I would place it after boots. However, it's very clear that we're talking about four different items, so in this case, it's optional. What about number three? Number three, it is important to use an Oxford comma. She dedicated her new book to her roommates, Justin Bieber and Ryan Gosling. Without the Oxford comma, it looks like her roommates are Justin Bieber and Ryan Gosling. So using the Oxford comma after Bieber before and makes it clear that she has dedicated her new book to her roommates and Justin Bieber and Ryan Gosling. Now in number four, the Oxford comma is optional. It's clear we're talking about three separate activities. And in this list of activities, we don't have extra coordinating conjunctions to make it complicated. Whereas in number five, we do. If you look at this list, there are a lot of coordinating conjunctions. For the snowy evening, we prepared hot chocolate and marshmallows, apple cider and cinnamon sticks, comma, and tea and honey. Because we have so many coordinating conjunctions, we want to add a comma before and to make it clear, we're talking about three different drinks, hot chocolate and marshmallows, apple cider and cinnamon sticks, and tea and honey. In this case, it just makes it easier to read. Okay, so let me know how many you got correct in the comment section below. And I really hope this lesson helped clarify the Oxford comma for you. Please click like if you enjoyed this video. Make sure to share with your friends and family who also may want to improve their level of English. And I'll see you all in my next lesson.